Welcome back everybody to the second episode of Senran Kagura Festival Versus with CNK Gaming. That's the name we went with, right? CNK Let's Play, CNK Play. With any of them really work. You just got to work that CNK in there cuz we need the branding. Chinchillas and kangaroos. Right? Yes, yes. That works. Let's go with that. Why did the kangaroos have chinchillas in their pouches? Is this right. a dirty joke? All right, moving on. This is the second good girl school like these uh and you can tell they're good girls because their uh their uniforms actually cover them up <laughs> i mean that that's not a defining trait in this series ah marakumo just so you guys know this chick has chinabiu you want to tell the audience uh what that means for those of them among them who are not weebs okay so if you haven't <laughs> gauged it from how she's she's talking in a deep voice because that's her persona when she wears that mask she's the demon king and yeah when she wears that mask she goes all tim the tool man taylor on us <laughs> just gonna move past that <laughs> i cut her off in the middle of <laughs> this is the uh Minori is the kindergarten stereotype of this game. Even though her chest is substantially larger than the uh, than the teenager that we had at the beginning of the game. Yosokura is the uh, I don't know the big sister character. Hard to hard to say. Shiki is the French goth Lolita. Like that, that, I, I shit you not. She is the French goth Lolita. That's. That's wow, they're going for three and one with her, huh? Kinda. I mean, the, actually, I guess she's not the gothic Lolita. There's another character that's totally the gothic Lolita. But she is French. She's kind of like a, a succubus in her design. A succubus? Succubus. Yes. Uh, Yumi is a Yuki Ono, which is a Japanese ice spirit. It's kind of like a, a wandering woman in the snow who... God, it's like that. It's like that uniform is just made with a pouch on the chest. <laughs> God damn. I mean, they gotta compensate for their well endowed students. <laughs> yes, because that seems to be a prerequisite for joining this school. Is you have to be a D cup okay. or larger. Okay, this is this is a running gag throughout the prologue. A every group of girls gets sucked into the. Uh, like the festival world because it takes place in like a pocket dimension no to editor Ed cut her off after she says the girls get sucked <laughs> i swear to god if you do that we're already we're already at a point where we're going to get demonetized for how raunchy this game can get already I so swear, i swear to god i can see it now you're gonna do another jojo reference <laughs> <laughs> the girls get sucked da, 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 da. no i can't do that every playthrough it'll get stale <laughs> and the yeah, meme's already dead but what i was getting at was that light that light becomes a running gag between them all okay like you'll see here so yeah at this point we've had we've already introduced like 10 characters and we're not even two chapters into the prologue yet. Has it been ten characters? We have Ryobi and Riona. Uh, these these five girls right here. Uh, I guess the grandma was there. Oh, Ryoki. Ryoki, the, uh, the Riona sister's uh, mm -hmm. sister. Their older sister. So that's nine so far. <laughs> it's almost ten. Yes, but my point is, yeah, that's... God, there's so many characters in this game. Yeah, see, she's completely unaware of the uh, the blinding light coming from behind her. and Because she has no peripheral vision, she's like a horse. <laughs> okay, she's the blogger. The blogger. Why did you say it like that? Because that's how you said it. She's the blogger. <laughs> Fucking Murakumo. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you for everything. I keep accidentally tapping the edge of my she, mic stand. I hope that's not think, showing up. They think that she's dying. Well, bye. 
<laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if this game pulled something like that, introduce a character just to kill them off in the next scene. If it were for comedic purposes, I, I could totally see it. God, the the breast pouches even bounce with their... Mm. <laughs> Sweet. See, this is the cut. I can't help but... If the game is going to draw so much attention to it, I can't help but do it too. We're on the beach! <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd enjoy this, sweetie. No, I'm in. I'm enjoying playing it with you. I'm just saying, like, this is the type of game that doesn't usually hold my interest for for too long. So I warned you going in. I'm probably going to rag on this a lot. <laughs> you did not warn me about that at all. <laughs> well, I, um, I'm warning you now. <laughs> okay. Well, now I guess I know. And knowing is half the battle. Here they here they come. The threat. Old Man McGucket! Yeehaw! Welcome to my beach, you pretty young things! Please do not do an old man voice with this game. <laughs> I mean, there's gotta be one in there. We're just going to try and go as far with this as we can, aren't we? Every single one of them also has their own, like, introduction statement, I guess. Uh, now, do, um... Is there anything like equipping weapons and armor in this game? Can you change those out? Or is everybody locked to a, a, a particular weapon? Uh, they're all locked to a particular weapon, but you can change their outfits. Do Does that grant you any bonuses in-game? Yes, it grants you such lovely views. <sighs> Not what I meant, and you know it. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's another thing that just sort of pushes me away from this game uh, again i don't mind fan service if it, if it's if it's not like a mountain falling over me but like if, if you're going to have something in a game like Here changing outfits you should you should at least justify it a little bit or or do something like the new spider-man game does where every suit that you can put on has a particular suit power associated with it well most of them do and um you don't have to have one suit equipped for that power. You, I keep knocking my mic stand. Damn it! You can you can wear a suit and equip any suit power that you've already unlocked. So you're not, um, you're not locked into wearing a suit you don't like just because the power is useful. Yeah, yeah, I can I can see that I suppose. But this game is very much about fan service, as I have stated before. No. <gasps> I'm so shocked to hear that. So this is where they introduce uh, this move. This isn't something that's unique to Yumi. When you knock back enemies, you can dash after them to attack them more in midair. It's called an aerial raid. Which seems like a very important thing to know about. I'm really surprised this wasn't one of the first things they taught you. Like I said, the entire prologue is a giant tutorial session. Mm -hmm. Every single one teaches you a new form of uh, combat in this game. Mm -hmm. So her special weapon is obviously uh, a fan. What yeah. kind of fighter would you say she is? It's hard to say. Like she, She's kind of a, a mage because of the uh, the way that she uses ice and stuff. Mm -hmm. So hard to say. I, I, I don't know if I can really pinpoint how each and every individual character well, I mean, like, would be as a class. Well, one way to put it is, like, is she um, up close and personal? Is she a crowd controller? Does she specialize in taking out um, enemies from afar and so on? Or is she more focused on what's directly in front of her? Th those are the sorts of things that I think sort of help define characters in a Muso game. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know with Yumi. Like, I have to replay the game a little bit to get a... To refresh myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. But right now it's teaching me about, like, if there's a bunch of enemies around me, I can go like that. It costs a little bit of health to do that, but it saves you from getting stomped on by groups of enemies if you are kind of getting overwhelmed. Yeah, I will definitely say that the enemies in this game look like they're moving a little bit faster than your typical grunts in a Muso game. Uh, they're much more eager to surround you, like... In something like uh, Hyrule Warriors, it's very, very easy to keep enemies, uh, gr large groups of enemies at bay in front of you. 
Uh, you very rarely find yourself surrounded in that game, from what I remember. See, even when I'm in the air, they are jumping up there after me. Mm -hmm. So, woo, 300 hit combo. But yeah, you can see all the ice and stuff. She is clearly a Yuki Ona themed character. You were looking at the ice? Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> like we're on the beach. Look at that beautiful ice. It, it looks so delicious. We should make snow cones. Because that's what we're here for. <laughs> it's the end of October. We don't need snow cones. Well, actually, studies have shown that people do prefer to, uh... What's I'm gonna call it? I guess I should show this Shinobi transformation for her right now. They all hide their scrolls in a different place, I should also mention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um... What's I'm gonna call it? In the wintertime, studies have shown that people... That outfit would provide absolutely no support for those breasts. Oh, I missed her. <laughs> you whiffed it. Oh. Shut up. But, uh... Studies have shown that people prefer to eat ice cream and cold stuff during the winter season. Okay. I would just like to point out, how dare you bring logic and science... Into a Senran Kagura Estival Versus playthrough. How dare you? It wasn't even related to the game. <laughs> I don't care. How dare you? This game session isn't about talking about scientific and logical sociological things. It is about the boobies and the booties. <laughs> I'll and... say this. Yeehaw. And there is our episode title. <laughs> the Boobies and the Booties. Space Dandy would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you press R1 to guard. If you uh, press guard at the right moment, then you parry, of course. As you do in games like this. Oh yeah, this is where it wants you to get it down. Well, those girls actually Whoa. look pretty threatening. Oh, these ones actually are. They have a lot of HP. Mm. Ah, I was guarding in the wrong direction. <laughs> and suddenly uh, things just got a whole lot more interesting. I'm not used to this in a Musou game. Something that actually forces you to guard. Come on. So it, it's come not it's not going to let you actually fight there back until you uh, until you finish uh, guarding. Yes. Oh, it's one of those kinds of tutorials. Okay. Whoops, I pressed a button other than the aerial rave button, so I didn't go after them. Ah! I recovered. There, her, uh, her two-scroll move is a area attack thing like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, and these guys, they drop scrolls. You see, I just picked up a scroll. It instantly filled my scrolls back up. Mm -hmm. So even though they're really hard to kill... It's worth using super moves to kill them because you can immediately get your uh, scrolls back from them. And I uh, see that you can also freeze enemies. Can you do other elemental types of uh, abilities and does that actually help you or is it mostly an aesthetic thing? thing? You Freezing enemies does lock them into place like they can't come after you. See? see? Uh-huh. It temporarily ah! stuns them. So what about other, like, can you, uh, like light uh, enemies on fire or electrocute them or things like With that different characters but like i said she is a snow prince well yeah i figured that but i'm just i'm just asking if that's a consistent thing it is so there are other characters that have certain elemental moves and such mm -hmm. oh why'd you go after this skinny scrawny thing go after the big girls well, Why? I guess I guess now we know uh, Midori's preference. I feel threatened. <laughs> well, as long as you're gonna keep making awkward jokes, honey, you're not supposed to tell them. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, you sort of outed yourself there. Eh. She didn't deny it. So, as you can see, you can kind of. Uh keep aerial raving as long as you can uh, pull it off like if an enemy isn't defeated right away by the first aerial rave 
Oh, that's a nice thing that I like about her uh, super form. When you're in your regular clothes and you do the, uh, the mid-air combo, it slams her down to the ground where you can't continue performing aerial raids. But in her super transformation, instead she knocks them back further and can continue doing aerial raves until they are dead. Mm -hmm. As long as you can pull off the timing right and don't press buttons other than the aerial rave button. That does sound like it's something that would come in real handy when you're fighting other characters. I'm assuming there are character battles in this game. Oh, there are. Like I has said, this is... This is the prologue. This mm -hmm. is kind of introducing us to how to play the game. So they're not going to have us battle against other characters just yet. Mm -hmm. But they do finish off the tutorial with that. So do these... Um, we haven't really seen it yet, but I'm guessing this will be answered when we start seeing repeated characters. When you transform like that, is that a permanent transformation in the prologue, or do they go back to wearing their uniforms it's, the next time you see it's them? Permanent for that part. When you go to like the next part, like another level, mm -hmm. they go back to their school uniforms. Okay. And uh, I'm going to let you all know ahead of time that uh, there are certain areas where if you defeat an enemy character, it will strip off all their clothes. But it is censored. It is centered with bright, blinding light. Yep. Blinding light. And uh, it does transfer over into these story sequences. Of course. So, letting you know that that's a thing. She looks happy? <laughs> she looks happy or high. I can't decide which. She has such weird slang. You and me, Yozy, it's the ocean. Oh, Sen, oh, Sen. We totally got to swim right now. Like, come on, totally, guys. <laughs> so she, uh, it sounds like they're trying to portray her as a... Um, Valley girl, yes. Val <laughs> Is she from Osaka? Maybe? I, I, I thoroughly admit I don't know the... Di I... I can't tell the difference between the dialects in I, Japan, so I do apologize Osa about that. But... Osaka, I think, is more of a country thing, so I don't think that it's a valley girl thing. Mm. Well, that's that's true, yeah. I don't know why I went o Osaka there. But yeah, those five girls right there, not only do they go to the same school together, they're kind of like a weird family. They're almost like sisters to each other. Mm -hmm. Literally, like Yumi's a grandfather... Like, they all call him grandfather. They all treat him like he's their grandfather. As they... opposed to the actual sisters we met first, who are uncomfortably close at times. Okay, this is this is something interesting about the game. The, uh, the fact that it does have the whole, like, leveling up thing. Mm -hmm. But as you play through the story, like, for the sake of, like, certain levels and everything, it will suddenly jump a character's level up by 10 levels and it stays that way mm -hmm. so it gives you permanent stat increases to make sure that you are actually prepared so that you can that's actually kind of smart to to keep it playing uh to keep people able to progress if they uh if if they're having difficulty yeah but it only does it once only once yeah it only does it once for each character except for one mm-hmm <laughs> we'll get to that, I'm sure. Oh yes, it's during the prologue. We well, hello. are going to get to And we're back to Midriffs. Yes, these are the other evil girls from the Evil Girl Academy. <laughs> the uh the friends of Ryobi and Riona. Mm-hmm. Um those two on the sides, um, they are they are sisters. They are sisters as well. I, I guess that this Evil Girl Academy kind of has a weird sense of family as well. Murasaki is the gothic Lolita that I mentioned before. She's okay. the actual gothic Lolita. Mm -hmm. And she also is a shut-in that just wants to stay on her computer all day. So she's uh, a hikikimori. Kind of, yes. She is a gothic Lolita hikikimori. Okay, then. And her sister, she's kind of like the class representative type. She had like... Yeah, she she's got glasses. And, and camouflage undies. Some of them have very specific taste in underwear. Because of course they do. <laughs> Emu, uh... 
Emo has a crush on their uh, team leader, the uh, the the white-haired girl here, Miyabi, and, who has a very deep voice. Yeah, and she's not putting on that voice. Mm -hmm. She is the leader of this team, just like uh, Yumi is the leader of the uh, that other team. And like I said, <laughs> Emu. There it is again. Emu has a crush on Miyabi. Was it Miyabi? Yes. Yes. But there's also another character that has a crush on her that she has mixed feelings for. And that other character is my favorite character. Mm hmm. Sis, why are you looking at me like that? Your forehead get bigger? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, that's actually pretty funny. My God, she does have a big forehead. <laughs> Billboard brow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it hasn't gotten bigger. It's shining brightly. <laughs> My forehead shining? What on earth are you talking about? It's true. It's truly shining, shimmering even. My God. Don't worry, sis. Even with a shiny forehead, you'll always be my sister. <laughs> See, and the same for me. You'll always be a part of this team, no matter how brightly your forehead may shine. See, in situations like this, I kind of think that um, what you said before doesn't really apply where it tries to take itself seriously, because this very obviously is not taking itself seriously. It tries to take itself seriously in the introduction, I guess I should have specified. Oh, so when we were first meeting, uh, the like, Ryobi and the, the setup... It was treating it more seriously. Yes, and what you called the long-winded introduction. Like, that's what I mean by this game takes itself seriously at first. But then, it's like, boobs, boobs, jiggle, jiggle, look at how silly we are. With our shiny foreheads. Um. What? You, you can you can speak into the mic. I, I, do, I don't know if I should be talking about, like, oh, how long has the up show been going? Like, technical stuff like that. Like, who cares? The fans might care. Well, then they probably already stopped listening. How, how long has the episode been going? Oh, yeah, we should probably stop now. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> I'll leave you on this wonderful image of Emu's shining forehead. Shining forehead! <laughs> Bye. <laughs>